Singapore's ruling party will have to choose a new successor to Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. DPM Heng Sui Kiet has decided to step aside as the leader of the fourth gen leadership team. Turning 60 this year, Mr Heng feels that the next prime minister should have a sufficiently long runway, a situation that's not helped by the uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic. His decision has been accepted by Mr Lee and was discussed at a cabinet meeting yesterday. PM Lee says that the timing of the announcement amid the pandemic is done with public accountability in mind. A cabinet reshuffle will also be announced in about two weeks' time. Mr Hing will relinquish his position as finance minister at the cabinet reshuffle, but he'll stay on as deputy prime minister and coordinating minister for economic policies. He'll also remain the People's Action Party's first assistant secretary general. Given the unexpected turn of events, Mr Lee Sien Long will stay on as prime minister until the fourth generation team chooses a new chief, which he says should not take more than a couple of years. This is a significant setback to our succession plans. The 4G team want to give themselves more time to work out new succession arrangements. I have therefore agreed to stay on until such time as a new 4G leader is chosen and is ready to take over. Our immediate focus is on the health and economic crisis, but both they and I are very conscious that succession remains an urgent task and cannot be put off indefinitely. I think it will take longer than a few months but I hope that they will reach a consensus and identify a new leader before the next general elections. I have no intention of staying on longer than necessary. Mr Lee has pledged to see Singapore through the COVID-19 pandemic before handing over the country to the next generation of leaders. He says what's needed is to ensure Singapore remains stable during the leadership transition. I will stay on a bit longer so that the new successor can be identified and can get ready. And as soon as he's ready, I would like to hand over to him. I hope then to be able to help him and his team to succeed and to take Singapore forward beyond the time when I'm Prime Minister. I think that's a responsible thing to do. I, I know people look around the world and they look at um, the United States, they look at some models closer to home, and they say, you, you are still very young in comparison. Well, maybe so, but those are different models for different countries. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But in Singapore, I think it's not just wanting a younger minister with energy and uh, um, uh, the runway, but also wanting a system where we are able to carry this from PM to PM, from government to government, and have a system which will provide high-quality government for the long term for Singapore. And that's what I would like to tr be able to do. Singapore United Mr Lee commended Mr Hing for his exceptional work as finance minister, especially during the pandemic, where he delivered five budgets to tide Singaporeans over the crisis. Mr Lee, along with Mr Hing and the senior ministers, will help to mentor the younger ministers as they identify another leader among themselves to make a smooth and timely leadership transition. There's no plan. Mr Heng says the next Prime Minister should have sufficient time to formulate and see through longer-term strategies and win the support of the people. But he would have too short a runway, as he would be close to the mid-60s if he takes over when the pandemic is over. Mr Heng says Singapore needs a leader who will not only rebuild the country post-COVID, but also lead the next phase of nation-building. Brandon Tenuto with more. Last July, you mentioned that the Mr. Hing revealed he has been thinking about the issue of succession since he was appointed leader of the fourth generation team almost three years ago. And even though he's in good health, despite suffering a stroke in 2016, the 59 year old says it's better for someone younger to take over and steer Singapore through uncharted waters. Singapore politics is not about self, but what is good for Singapore. And I've been constantly thinking of what is in the best interest of Singapore and Singaporeans and whether it is to, in Singapore's best interest if the runway for the Prime Minister is too short. And this is especially so in a post-COVID world, because I think the disruptions brought about by COVID will be very significant. Mr Hing says his decision is not influenced by the results of last year's general election and his team's performance in East Coast GRC, which the People's Action Party retained after a close contest. I have been an MP in Tampines for you know, 10 years and worked very well with the team and uh, 
and built a certain rapport with the residents. But when East Coast needed reinforcement, I decided to go. It is a completely new ground for me. And uh, I, you know, I, I did my best together with my team. And I, when I went during the campaign period, there were uh, residents who told me that they changed their mind to vote for the PAP since I was there. So uh, that is not for me to judge, it's for others to, to judge. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long says he looks forward to Mr Heng continuing to make broader contributions to government policy and to party work. He will have a full agenda, building on what he has started. There's urgent work to do to take our economy beyond COVID-19. Will, this will also dovetail with his role as Chairman of the National Research Foundation, where we are making steady progress in promoting research, innovation and enterprise. I also look forward to Sui Kiat continuing to make broader contributions to government policy and to party work. Singapore's fourth generation leaders say that the team will need more time to choose another leader. They stress that it's not just about picking another person, but also about forming the best leadership team to take the country forward. The team is grateful that PM Lee has agreed to their request to stay on as prime minister until a new successor is chosen and ready to take over. Geraldine Yap with more. Cabinet lined up last year. Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh says the team should be given the opportunity to relook the question of succession holistically. Our leadership succession plans goes beyond just choosing a leader. It is more than that. It is always about finding and forming the strongest team possible for Singapore so that Singapore have the best chance to defy the odds of history to not only survive but to thrive. And that we will continue to do and that is what our entire team is committed to do for Singapore and all Singaporeans. When asked if there are any frontrunners for the leadership, Transport Minister Ong Yi Kang says the People's Action Party doesn't look at succession as a race. Our way is fundamentally, we look at the team, how the team work together, how we complement each other's strengths, and where we have shortcomings, which we all do, how do we support each other? When it's a race, you only have one winner at the end, standing on the podium with a medal around his or her neck. With a team, we fight hard and so on the field, and if we win, we have a trophy for the nation. And in that winning team, you will have a captain that can bring out the best of everybody. So that process of developing a strong team and rallying around a first among equal leader takes some time. And while COVID-19 has disrupted plans, it has also helped the ministers grow and gain experience. I think Singaporeans could see how the 4G ministers have fed and have really taken on the role in their stride. We have also grown as a team because many of these challenges they've just described actually involve a lot of teamwork, a lot of coordination behind the scene. And I think this has really bode well. We have really gelled as a team. We have many opportunities to debate, to argue, to disagree, to agree with one another. And I think this has given us confidence that we will be able to select our new leader in good time. The ministers add that they are aware that selecting a new leader is an urgent and important task, but they say the process will take time. This unexpected turn of events is a setback for our succession planning. We recognise that Singaporeans will be concerned. We seek your support and understanding as we choose another leader from the team. We will continue working as a team to serve our people and to earn the confidence and trust of all Singaporeans.